Okay guys, there, there was a viewer that made a comment underneath one of my videos and it was talking about why we shouldn't call ourselves Indians, but the thing is, is that legally, when it comes to getting things that belong to you and your ancestors, according to the treaties, in those treaties they refer to your ancestors as American Aborigines or Indians. And then even when it comes to law, Black Law Dictionary, Bouvier's Dictionary, etc., etc., they always say American Indians or American Indian nations. Okay, so I use what's beneficial to me and my family, and I suggest other people do the same. But let's get into the term Indian and the lie that Columbus said that he thought that he reached the Indies. So anyways, it says here, Mamana Taka, American Indian Council, proudly presents lies teachers taught us, tell us about Columbus. Since the founding of the United States, every school age child was taught that Christopher Columbus originally named the inhabitants of the land he discovered Indians because he mistakenly thought he found a route to the Indies. This article proves without a doubt that the lesson and other so-called historical facts about Columbus are lies. From illuminating the historic and contemporary path by David Michael Wolfe, the self-proclaimed inheritor of the right of discovery, the United States government and its European imperial ancestors successfully usurped the entire Western hemisphere from the original indigenous peoples and redefined their identity and ways of life, community standards, family structure, language, tribal confederations, concepts of sovereignty and freedom, clan and blood laws and spiritual practices to ensure their destruction. The powers of the empire devised what I free term a fire and forget strategy, a self-perpetrating and artificial construct to term American Indian and the American Indian world, an artificial person and world that is maintained by the very subjects that it has subjugated and redefined. The root of the term Indian. The origin of the term is purportedly due to the circumstances of a 1400s Genoese sailor, Cristoforo Colombo, a.k.a. Columbus, allegedly discovering a shorter oceanic route to what we are told were the lands referred to in his day as the Indies. Was India known by its original peoples as the Indies or India prior to 1492? No. India was not the true name as used by the people of that anomalous name in the 1400s. The etymology of the term India from Latin India, region of the Indus River, later used in that region and beyond from Indios, Indus River from Oper Hindu. The name for the from Latin India, from Greek India, region of Sind or Sindhu River, more common form. India, the term the Indies, began to prevail in the 16th century underneath the Spanish or Portuguese influence beyond the reality that the indigenous peoples of India did not refer to their domains as such. Even at the time of the infamous Columbus, the name India was not in use until the 16th century. It says, as seen and stated by its own people, India had been called Barat, even in Satyuga, Golden Age. The name India is derived later invading entities from the river Indus, the valleys around which the home of the early settlers, the original pre-Christian Aryan celebrants refer to the river Indus as Sindhu. Persian invaders converted into Hindu. The term, the name Hindustan combines Sindhu and Hindu and thus freely infers the land of the Hindus. Thus, as the time of Columbus, India was known by the Persian edifice, variously Hindus or Hindustan. So basically, at that time when Columbus came over here, that place wasn't called um, India, like I had stated. So it was called Hindustan at that time. So there's no way that he could have thought that he was going to India because that place wasn't called India at the time. But anyways, it says no country, land, sea, or people in the world were named India prior to 1492. The subcontinent of the nation and country known today as India did not come, become officially so-called named until later arriving in a permanent British presence in 
the 1700s. The Eurasian domains of India and the various autonomous indigenous domains prior to and at the time of 1492, known by their various proper designations as Hindustan, Turkestan, Kurdistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan, as designated by the very original indigenous peoples. This is hence the question is the slang referred to Indies, its subsequent Indio did not surface into popular use among Spanish and Portuguese until the 16th century. How could Columbus simply spoon forth from his mouth in 1492? Either Columbus had knowledge of the future or he didn't set sail for the Indies until at least the 1500s when the term India and the Indies was in use. So how has India, has a reference to all original indigenous peoples of the Americas, come to be a correct justification for the term Indian, American Indian? People or children of God, some of the indigenous terms of identity expressed by the indigenous peoples of the Caribbean islands that were first visited by Columbus were detailed in an original narrative that is the public domain, Brevis Emia, Recolocion, De la Desistro, De las Indias by Bartholomew De las Casas. Okay. And it says originally published in Seville, which is in Spain, 1552, by Guttenberg. It says property truly displayed in this bloody colors or a faithful narrative of the unexampled massacres, butcheries, and all manner of cruelties that, that hell and malice could invent committed by the Popish Spanish party on the inhabitants of West India, together with the devastations of several kingdoms in America by fire and sword for the space of 40 and two years for the time of its first discovery by them, composed first in Spanish by Bartholomew de la Casas, a bishop there and eyewitness of most of the barbarous cruelties, afterwards translated by him into Latin, then by other hands into High Dutch, Low Dutch, French, and taught to speak modern English. London, printed for R. Hewson at the Crown in Cornhill near the Stocks Market, 16. 89. So it says, it says within the narrative is an indication to the inception of the term Indio as ultimate reverent, though in its original telling the term Indio hence indicating the, the context and reference to of heaven or heavenly, Lacasse states. Finally, in one word, the ambition, the outer first, then with the heart of man never entertained greater and the vast wealth of these regions the humility and the patience of the inhabitants, which made their approach to these lands more facile and ease, did much promote the business whom they so despicably contempted, that they treated them, I speak of things which I was an eyewitness of, without the least fallacy, not as beasts, which I cordially wished they would, but as the most abject dung and filth of the earth, and so solicitous that they were of their life and soul that above mentioned the number of people died without understanding the true faith or sacraments. And this also is a really true as the president narration, which the very tyrants and cruel murderers cannot deny without the stigma of the lie that Spaniards never received any injury from them, but that they re rather reverenced them as persons descended from heaven until they were compelled to take up arms, provoked unto, thereunto, but repeated injuries, violent torments, un, unjust butcheries. So in other words, so he was saying that our ancestors, they were like people from heaven. You know, they were like godly people, holy type people. And they didn't do any injury to the Spaniards until the Spaniards had attacked them viciously, basically. So anyways, it says in the Latin language of Ecclesiastes and the royalties of the time, the Pope or children of God, as Spaniards often refer to the indigenous, translate freely as Los Niños de la Indio, and consequently Los Niños de la Indios, more literally children of God. So that's what the term come from. So basically, they were saying that our people were the children of God. That's what they were referring to them as according to, you know, the writings of Barthel Bartholomew de la Casas. So that's where it comes from. And it says, proceeding from narratives of Bartholomew 
de la Casas, together with additional reports, according his pleas to the king and the queen of Spain in behalf of the few surviving indigenous of the Caribbean, is likely as close as one is to come to comprehending the origin of the term Indio and Indian as applied to the American Indians. And it says, within many of his trips back to Spain from Americas to plead with the King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella for the souls and the lives of the indigenous people, then swiftly disappearing underneath the subjugating sword, disease, and slavery of the Spaniards and the Portuguese. Las Casas summarily informs the royal hands of Castile, Spain, that upon observing the nature of the manners of the indigenous people of Guna Hane, the island that Columbus first visited, their manners are decorous and praiseworthy. They are guiltless and honest, with no vices among them. They have no thieves or liars among them, and they give freely of all that they have. And when they have no more to give, they cry. He continues, they are truly as the children of God, los niños. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there, and I'm going to leave this at the bottom so you can check this out. Now I'm going to go over to Instagram to check out what... Uh, brother Copper Hat Step, what he posted about the term India and how that place was called Bharat and how it was called Hindustan. All right, we're gonna look at this slide that a Copper Hat Step made, and um, it's uh, change.org is a petition and it says change the name of India to Bharat. It says, Please join the movement to change the name of India to Bharat. Did you know the true name of India is Bharat? The misrepresentation took place 400 years ago by foreign governments that believed they had the right to change the country name from Bharat to India. Thus has been a great disservice to the people of Bharat to diminish the rich culture that was given so much to the world. Our country has shared the benefits of such vegetarian, Ayurvedic medicine, practicing yoga, inventing zero rich natural resources, and advocating nonviolence that brought nation to its knees. And then it says, it says, in fact, though, India and Bharat are names that are accepted by the Constitution. The only name that is used officially for our country at many places at national levels, including the Constitution itself, and at all places, not at the international level, is India and that Bharat. It says India, India <clears throat> is not the original name. It is Bharat, Bharat Mata. And mother of Indians. The name Bharat is a well accepted in our country, various governmental and social fields, which is evident from the following examples. And it says our national anthem, Ja Jang Man, Adhinyak Ja He Bharat. And then it says our national pledge, Bharat Miradesh He. And then you see other other times that they mention it. And it says here, it says the cricket match between India and England as Bharat or England. Kegbish. We say Bharat. Mata Kija. And never India. Mata Kija. Okay, now the definition Indians in the law dictionary it says the law.com dictionary. And the term Indians says the Aboriginal inhabitants of North America. By Frezzy versus Spokane County, 29 Washington, 27869, PAC 782, Indian Country. The term does not necessarily import territory owned and occupied by Indians, but it means all those portions of the United States designated by this name and legislation of Congress, Indian Tribe, a separate and distinct community or body of Aboriginal Indian race of men found in the United States. And then it says Indian Tribe a separate and distinct community or body of Aboriginal Indian race of men found. Okay, and then here it says Anglo-Indian and Englishman domiciled in Indian territory of the British Crown. Let's click on Indian tribe. A separate and distinct community or body of Aboriginal Indian race of men found in the United States. Such a tribe situated within the boundaries of a state and exercising the powers of government and sovereignty under the national and government is deemed politically a state that is distinct political society capable of self-government but is not deemed a foreign state in the sense of the constitution. It is rather a domestic dependent nation such as a tribe may properly be deemed in a state 
of Pulich in relation to the United States resembles that of a ward to a guardian. Okay, so Indian tribe. So that's the reason why, you know, legally, that's why I use that term, okay, Indian, because that is what is on the books when in is referring to the Aboriginal races of North America. Okay, and so here, let's look at this right here. It says the Constitution annotated analysis and interpretation of the U.S. Constitution. This is constitution.congress.gov. Okay, so Article 1, and it says Section 8, and I'm going through the different clauses. Now, look at Clause 3. This is Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3. And it says here, it says to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several nations and with Indian tribes. Okay, Indian tribes. That's what is mentioned in the Constitution. So, you know, therefore... When you see these things, they refer to the Aboriginal people in law. They said the Aboriginal people of North America, they refer to them as Indians or Indian tribes. And in the Constitution, they refer to the people as Indians. So it's like to your best interest for you to use the term, even though your ancestors did not call themselves Indians and they, didn't, they did not come up with the term but when it comes to law, you got to use what benefits you in order for you to let them know or to designate, you know, where you're coming from to let them know, you know, exactly what it is that you're trying to say that you are, that you are an indigenous Aboriginal person from North America. And the term for that is Indian. Anyways, so I rest my case on this situation. Tell me what you think about this. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.